So this is an inert gas scrubber. Let's check out a critical part of safe cargo tanker operations. Inert gas, a topic we mentioned in our boiler video. Without it, a ship could become a huge bomb when unloading cargo. Together, we will have a basic overview of this complex system which keeps us safe. First, what is inert gas? Inert gas on most tanker ships is combustion gases that through the combustion process have low oxygen concentration. And by low, I mean from 3 to 8%. It's mostly carbon dioxide. When this gas is put inside an environment, such as a tank, it creates an atmosphere where combustion is impossible. But we'll talk more about that later. On even more dangerous places, such as chemical tankers, a pure nitrogen inert gas plant may be installed to inject pure nitrogen in an environment which will act as an inert gas due to its very low reactivity. Both of these gases basically do the same thing, displace the oxygen in an environment and due to their own low oxygen concentration, it will remove the oxygen part of the combustion triangle. Since both of these gases have replacing oxygen in the environment in common, it's important to remember that oxygen is necessary for life. Below 21%, we will directly see symptoms of oxygen deficiency. And at extremely low levels, it can be instantly fatal. Remember, there have been many cases of seafarers losing their lives. This is no joke. Analyze any hazardous environment you suspect or know to have this risk before entering or opening. So where do we acquire this gas on board the ship? Well, the combustion gases we can get from either the engines or the boiler. However, most ships we will use the boiler for this purpose, due to the ability to control both our fuel and air mixture in the burner, which helps us create a gas with low oxygen concentration. With this, we can also avoid forming black soot gases that can foul our environment and the pipes. Whereas the engine, their combustion is dependent on the load, which they have either electrically in a generator or mechanically in case of the main engine. For nitrogen gas, however, chemical tankers usually have their own plant, which will take nitrogen from a shore facility or they will have a production plant on board which will take nitrogen from the environment and filter it so it's safe to use. Focusing on the combustion gases, they come out from our boiler hot and with small soot particles. Therefore, they need to be washed and cooled in what is called an inert gas scrubber, which uses seawater spray to cool and clean the combustion gases. This wash water is continuous, so new seawater enters the tower and the old seawater that washed the gases is discharged overboard. The inner gas later leaves cool and clean to our inner gas blowers, which are centrifugal fans. They will increase the pressure to allow the gas to move across the large pipelines all the way up to our cargo tank. But before the tanks, or even the main deck, we have an oxygen analyzer, which continuously takes sample flow of the gas to monitor it, checking if it's in range for safe operation. If not, 
then tuning of the air fuel ratio in the burner must be done, like you can see here. If the inner gas does not comply with our oxygen safety requirement, then it is released to the atmosphere through our funnel or it can also be sent to a shore reception facility depending on the port administration. However, if the gas is compliant and safe, we can then send it to the main deck. On the main deck we have our next element, the deck seal. There are different types, however the most common one is the wet type. There is a continuous pump that sends a constant water column in this element. Here the inert gas flows and it pushes slightly the water column, maintaining the flow in only one direction. If the gas were try to come back, the water column will then enter the inlet pipe, sealing it, therefore isolating it from returning to the engine room. Finally, we have our cargo tanks, which our deck officers ensure that inert gas is always present and maintain a non-explosive environment. There are different methods of inert gas injection. However, I think that is a topic for another future video. Just know that inert gas is put in place to prevent accidents like this one from happening. After the tanks, for safety, we have pressure vacuum breaker valves on each tank which prevent overpressure or vacuum from being produced inside a tank. They have a head-shaped valve that in case of overpressure will open to release the gas inside the tank or an atmospheric suction to suck in atmospheric air in case discharge is happening so fast that there is no air and vacuum is starting to form inside the tank. Overpressure and vacuum are both very dangerous things that can happen to a tank, which deform it and can cause a disaster. Finally, an extra bit of information to understand the flammability diagram of hydrocarbons. It is very important that all officers know this for tanker operations. On the left side of the diagram, we can see the percentage of hydrocarbons by volume in the tank. Basically, the more full of cargo we have the tank, the higher it is. At this point, the tank is full of oil and the environment is too rich for combustion to take place. At this point, the cargo tank has little cargo left and it is almost empty. In the right conditions, an explosion could happen. We'll see about them soon. On the bottom side, we have the oxygen percentage by volume in the tank, where in this point we have no oxygen and at this point we have atmospheric oxygen, which is 21%, what is usually in our environment. This is important because below this point, at various degrees, we humans can have adverse health effects, up to even death. And finally to note that the right line which is slanted is basically because as hydrocarbon percentage goes up, the oxygen percentage naturally will go down inside the tank atmosphere. Now let's understand this diagram looking at tanker operations and what could happen with and without inert gas injection. To begin, we will be at this point, where the tank is full and the inert gas is below 5%, as usual, complying with company standards. The environment is both too rich in fuel and low in oxygen to create an explosion, so we're safe. 
so we now reach port and start to unload our tank. As the tank empties, so does our hydrocarbon percentage go down. But if we inject inert gas as we discharge, we will maintain an inert environment without creating a vacuum or allowing atmospheric air go in. So we go from this point to this one safely. Now, if we were to allow atmospheric air to go in while unloading, we would avoid a vacuum implosion because of our vacuum breaker. However, we will follow this line in our diagram, where our hydrocarbon percentage goes down, but oxygen percentage goes up, and we enter a explosive mixture area where any spark can cause a catastrophe. So naturally, this option is no good. So going back to this point, we can either fill up again using inert gas to maintain the oxygen level, or allow atmospheric in gradually to create a gas-free environment, which we call when the oxygen levels are safe enough for humans to go inside, such as a tank inspection. Finally, if we would like to load cargo while in this gas-free environment, we would have to put inert gas. Otherwise, we risk going once again into our explosive mixture zone. So before loading cargo, we would inject inert gas to reach this point once again and then after fill the tank. Our deck officers in the cargo control room as well as the engineers in the ECR must fully understand this and operate carefully to keep us all safe. And we engine team work hard to understand and maintain the system to operate safely and reliably. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. More in-depth topics about inner gas system such as the startup and the maintenance will come in the future. Success and nothing else, Seafair. Till next time.